All right, so today we get into the last lesson of filling and wrapping. Um, it talks about what is the relationship between circumference and area of a circle. So we're going to continue on this, this track of learning about circumference and area of a circle. So again, from what we talked about yesterday, the circumference of a circle. Oh, okay. Let's well, all this showing up. Let's get rid of that. So the circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter, and the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. And remember, the radius squared, it's r times r, times itself. Let's put it right on my desk. Thank you. Okay? It's not 4 times 2. So if you have 4 squared, what that's saying is 4 times 4, not 4 times 2 or 4 plus 4. It's 4 times 4. That's what that means. So... Under part A, it says the radius of a circular pizza is 6 inches. So we draw our pizza here. So the radius, again, is, remember, from the center to the edge of the circle, right? Is 6 inches. What are, what are its circumference and area? So, again, if we try to find the circumference, okay, that's pi times the diameter. Well, we don't have a diameter here, so how can I find the diameter? Gracie. Yeah, the diameter is double the radius, right? So if our radius is 6, our diameter is 12. So we would have 12 times pi, and if we put 12 pi into our calculator, 37.7. Is, is there more? Is, it's, if you round it, it's 70, right? Yeah. Yeah. 37.70 what? Inches. Inches. And that's just a singular, singular, singular unit of measurement because we're talking about the distance from one point of the circle going all the way around to the other edge. So if we were to disconnect it and stretch it out, we're talking about a length. Now, if we talk about area, we already have the radius, right? So that's pi times 6 squared. Well, we know that 6 squared is what? 36. So 36 times pi is... So it's like 09 something, right? So it rounds to 10. All right. Now, what's our what's our unit of measurement here, Gracie? Yes, inches squared or square inches, right? Because we're talking about area. Okay. All right. So the shape made by rearranging pizza slices looks like a parallelogram. You kind of see it here? Yes. All right. Estimate the height and base of the parallelogram and explain your reasoning. So what do you think, how do you think we could find that out? Aiden. Perfect. Right. Because remember, the, the radius is from the center to the edge here. So each slice, if you stand it up, it's about six inches, right? So what about what about that part? What about that part? Gavin, it's a little bigger than twelve. Right. Right, we're going to estimate it. But 12 is a little off. Robert? Little too big. You guys are pretty close. It's about 18.85. So, let's talk about why. Okay, so it says Aiden, Aiden hit the radius, right? So the height. Is about six, and we're, we're remember we're using, we're, we're estimating, right? So it's not exact. Since the side of the slice is the radius, 
That's exactly what Aiden said. The bases are made up of the crust, right? Right? Which is the circumference. So what we had to do is, since we have two bases here and here, and our total circumference is 37.7, right? Well, if this is the circumference, right, and then we do the perimeter of the parallelogram, if we, take, if we subtract 12 from that, right, Or you take 37.7 and divide it by 2. 18 point. Oop. Forgot to turn off the timer. 37 point is 18.85. If we take the circumference and divide it by 2. Because, again, the crust isn't the crust, the circumference of the circle. And we got the crust here and here. So if you just divided that by 2 because there's two bases, that gives us the ba each base is 18.85, which gives you 37.7 as the... Remember, this is an estimate. So each base is 18.85. So we did that. Well, no, the crust together, there's eight total slices. So you got one here and one here. That makes up the circumference. So if your total circumference was 37.7, you have to divide it into two because there's two bases. Here and here. It doesn't have to go to the sides here because the sides are the radius. All right, so what is the approximate area then of the parallelogram? Well, parallelogram is still base times the height, right, for the area. So you take 18.85 and multiply it by 6, which would be what? And it makes sense, right, that this is still the same number as this because we really took the same figure and just made it a different shape, right? Right? Instead of a circle, we made it a parallelogram, but we really used the pieces of the circle to make the parallelogram. So that's why those two numbers are the same. So again, how does it compare? We just answered that, right? How does it compare? They're the same. Because all, all we did was take the pieces of the circle and made it into the parallelogram. Again, I know it's an estimate, but still, they're the same. Question. I actually put it as an inequality. They're the same. They're the same. All right, C. So let's give you a little bit of time to try C. All right, so the connection between the area of a circular pizza and the area of the near parallel parallelogram. Near. So, again, that's kind of our estimated parallelogram, right? Formed when the pizza slices are rearranged is only an approximation. So, I think this word is supposed to be thinks, by the way. That does not make sense. So, Sarah thinks about the parallelogram and says that the area of a circle is area equals half times pi times the diameter times the radius. Evan thinks about covering the circle with the radius um, squares and says that the area is area equals pi times the radius, which we know that that's the actual area, right? That's the formula. So do these formulas give the same area for a radius of 6 centimeters? So we're going to pause this for right now. And I'm going to give you about five minutes to work on this. And let's see if they're both right or if one's right and one's wrong. Okay? So if you just take this information and plug it into where you're at, let's see if you get the same number. Don't change the formula. All right? We'll give you guys a All right. So what what'd you come up with? Who wants to share the results? Maria. So Maria said they're the same. How many people agree with Maria? Oh, everybody. Well, everyone agrees with you, Maria. All right, so 
Well, if we get if we use the formula and plug it in, well, remember Sarah said this: area equals half times pi times the diameter. What's the diameter? Twelve, because it's double the radius, right? And then times six, right? And then Evan said, well, it's just area equals pi times the radius, which is 6 squared, right? So if you put in your calculator 0 0.5, because that's what a half is, right, is a decimal, times pi, times 12, times 6, just all the way across and hit enter, you get about 113.10, right? If you round it to the nearest hundredth like we were doing, centimeters squared. That's a bad M. All right, and... If I do 6 squared, I know it's 36. So if I do 36 times pi, I get, rounding the same way, 113.10. So yes, they are the same. So all she did is basically this is another r, right? Half a diameter is another radius. Well, radius times the radius is radius squared. You learn that next year in eighth grade. So you got a little sneak preview for next year. Something to think about over the summer. <laughs> no? No one think about that over the summer? All right. So, again, would both formulas work for all values of R? So we made it 7, 10, 4. Would we still come up with the same answer? Yeah. And why? Here's why. Because the radius is half the diameter. And that first part of the equation is one half t times pi times the diameter. So again, that's, that's basically another way of saying radius. Right? So no matter what radius you make it, you're, the two are always going to come up with the same answer. Because you, really, you just kind of changed the way the equation looks. You didn't really change the equation. They just made an equivalent equation, one that is the same, just not you know, similar in how it looks. Now, how would the accuracy of the, approximate, uh, of the approximation change if you cut the pizza into more slices? So that pizza was, what, eight slices? So let's say it was 12 slices. Well, all they're saying about is the accuracy. So if we if we cut into more slices, wouldn't that kind of give us a little bit more detail? All right. So no. So think about this. If I had a slice of pizza here, all right, and we made the eight slices right here, all right. Right now we kind of have big arcs, right? So let's say if I took every slice and just kind of went even in half more. So now instead of 8, let's say this is, this is 16 slices. Aren't my arcs smaller? I remember I'm drawing this by hand so they don't look, but just imagine they're equal. Yeah, so this would actually make it just a little bit more accurate, and here's why. Watch this. Think about if this makes sense. The more slices you cut... Whether it's 16, 32, whatever, 32 slices would be terrible because you that's hardly, that's like a snack pizza. Who wants to eat a snack pizza? The crusts, and again, the crusts are the arcs. Remember the arcs in the uh, parallelogram? Become more of a straight line. Uh, more of a straight line. Now, it doesn't make a straight line, but it starts to straighten out a little bit, right? Because we're cutting down that curve is more, right? So the more slices we cut, it starts to kind of flatten out, which kind of makes our parallelogram look more like a parallelogram. You know what I mean? It's kind of, it starts to flatten out a little bit. So it would make it look a little bit more accurate. Arcs. A-R-C-S. So it would be more accurate. Notice how we said accurate, not exact. Okay? You can't make a perfect parallelogram out of pizza. Okay? It's just too rounded. But it, it, obviously, the more slices we cut, it flattens that arc out. It could make it more accurate. It will never be exact. 
The only way to make it exact is to draw four straight lines and you know, make them parallel. It's never going to be exact. So understand that the word accurate and exact are not the same thing. All right. All right, so let's see if you can figure out the last one here. We'll give you some time to work on the last one. So here, I'll let you write that down. Suppose that you have 12 meters of fencing and want to make a pen for your dog. Which shape, a square or a circle, so you got two options here to figure out, which shape would give you more area? So they want the one that gives you the most area. So again, we're going to pause this and give you guys some time to work on this. Tell me which would be better, okay? All right. No, it's not the same area. So if we take a square, right? Now, if the fencing is, if you stretch it out, it's 12 feet long, right? What does each side have to be? Joey? Three, right? So what's the area of a square? Length times the width. So what's the area of this? No. Nine. Now, if I if I have 12 feet of fencing, right? Meaning, if I if I draw a circle, well, from one edge of the circle to the other one is 12, right? 12 meters, right? These are three meters. So, it, it so we would do basically. So, what's the radius? Six, right? So it'd be pi times six squared. Well, six squared is 36, right? And 36 pi, we've already figured out to be what? We've done this problem like. Yeah, 113.10 square meters. So what number's bigger, 9 square meters or 113 square meters? Yeah, so the circle is the better option because there's more area. A lot more area. Would you love it if you were a dog running in a 3x3 three three square? Hey, let's run to the other. Oh, gotta go this way. Oh, gotta go this way. Dog take two steps and run into the fence. We're over here. I mean, you got, look at the area. You got a lot. All right. So, that's the homework assignment.